It's not all about what you're saying, it's about what you're thinking, what your thoughts are, and the single syllable words that they recognize. Now, I recommend a two syllable word for a dog's name to help you with that. I have seen many people with dogs, you know, called Bob, Rob, you know, whatever, that have trouble training their dogs. Because what happens is, well, you're, you're still in those one syllables. You're not calling my name. Is that my name? Are you sure that's my name? And then when you only say that name without, you know, good, good Bob, bad Bob, you just say Bob, well then it's, then it can be recognized. And of course, over time, the dog will recognize that that's its name. But when you have a family and you're bringing a new animal in, you have this whole new dynamic. And it's like adopting a child. You have to teach, you have to teach this new child how to be a part of the family. And you have to teach the people in the family how to be a family with the dog. It's not you bring the dog in and you just let him wing it. Because that happens way too often. People don't take the time to integrate the dog, talk to the dog, create a family unit with the dog, create a routine with the dog. When will the dog get fed? When will the dog go out? So many people don't do that. They take the dog out whenever they feel like taking the dog out. Don't get a dog if you're that kind of person. If you're that lazy, don't get a dog. Just as a, bringing home a newborn, it would need its diapers changed. It would be, need to be fed at certain times. The same thing with a dog. You need to kind of teach it a routine. You know, it's good to feed dogs twice a day, just as a routine. Not overfeed them, but whatever you would feed them in a day, you break that in half and you feed in the morning and in the evening. Same with walks. Remember, before you adopt a, ch adopt a dog, you must walk it. Even if you have a yard, they need time out there. They need play time. And I know many people who literally get up, get their clothes on, and go out the door for work. And you can't do that with a dog. If you don't have the luxury of having a yard, you need ample time to walk the dog. You need a good 30 minutes, at least, to walk the dog. I know so many people who are like so frustrated when they come to me. You know, I just need her to pee so we can go back in. No, this is her time. She's cooped up in that house all the time you're gone. So those walks or those times outside are her time. Let the dog have its time. You know, it's not your walk. If you want to go for a walk, then you go for a walk. But the dog needs its walk as well. And its walk includes sniffing everything in sight. Because again, using all senses, they use all their senses. So they're connected to everything. They're very telepathic. They're very communicative within their heart and soul. Not just to you, but to all the animals on the planet. To the bees, to the birds, to the earthworms, to the ants. They're all connected. And they want to reconnect. They want to go out and they want to like, okay, who's been here? All right, you know, here, I've been here too. You know, give them their time. Do not rush them. If that means you have to get up a half hour early, guess what? You're going to have to get up a half hour early. And I can tell you from experience, it's worth it. It is so worth it to take that extra time to just, let your dog lead you on the walk. And just see how good you feel by the time you leave for work. Just that time in nature is amazing. Now, if you're someone who has a yard, 
please do not just be the kind of person who opens the door, lets the dog out, goes, takes a shower, does everything, and then goes back, gets the dog, and then leaves. Give yourself 15 minutes to have a cup of coffee. If you don't drink co coffee, have breakfast. And go sit outside while the dog plays. Have a little interaction. Even if the interaction is just you watching your dog have a good time. And I don't care if your dog goes out and lays in the middle of the yard and doesn't move. That's its prerogative. That's its time. And that, if that's what it wants to do, then that's what it wants to do. Remember, this is a part of your family. This is an interaction. So back to receiving the dog. Again, everybody be on the ground, in the play area with the pet, and let the dog come to you guys. Let, make sure the dog goes to each person. Now, oh my God, um, 15, almost 18 years ago, my last dog, Snoopy, we got him from a pet store. And yes, I would not recommend buying a dog in a pet store. This was through a friend who owned the pet store. The dog was actually purchased for um, breeding, show dog, and something was physically wrong with it um, internally, so it had to be fixed. So it could not be a show dog. And so she called me because she knew I was looking for a dog. And so we went and looked, and of course we loved it. But when we were in the play area, even though the dog came directly to me first, I picked up the dog and turned it around and kind of let it go back out. Now it was a puppy, it was, you know, 12 weeks old, a puppy, and I let him go back out and go meet my nephews and go meet my brother because they were, we were all living in the same home at the same time. So even though we were having different lives, we were still a family unit because we lived under one roof. So everybody was there and everybody was picking to see if this dog would be a fit. And the dog came up, gave everyone a kiss and came back to me. <laughs> Probably because I was the one paying. So you just, you let the dog make sure it likes everybody. Make sure there's an interaction there and make sure every human likes the dog. If one person does not get along, there's going to be strife. Now, if you're at a county shelter and the dog has not been previously fixed, you obviously have to wait till the dog is fixed before you can pick it up and take it home. If that happens, if you have to leave the pet, once they take the dog back and put it in its cage, as a family, go back to where the dog is, sit in front of the cage, talk to it say okay this is what has to be done we well, we can't we can't take you home until tomorrow they won't let us you have to have a little procedure and as soon as that's done we'll be here to pick you up and then when you go back to pick up the animal when you see it they'll recognize you and believe me everything you say the dog's gonna understand So when you go back, if the dog is still in its cage and like maybe they can't get to you right away, go over there. You know, just go and kind of hang out in front of the cage and, and say, we're here, we're waiting, you know, they're going to get everything for you. If you brought, you know, of course, bring a leash, a, call, a harness, a collar, always, always harness always walk a dog on a harness because you can break the bones in the neck and not know it and I'm not talking about just little dogs Great Danes you can do the same thing um, and just you know let it know you're there and there will be immediate re recognition the dog will be happy that you're back that you remember to come back for it 
Remember, it's in a stressful situation. If you're lucky enough that, you know, the dog was already fixed and you get to take the dog home right away, perfect. Before you go to the rescue, make sure you have a leash, a harness, something. Now, if you're saying, well, how do I know? Because I don't know what size dog I'm getting. Then what you do is you tell the dog, I have to go to the store and I have to get you stuff and then I'll be right back. And that's literally what you do. You go to the pet store, you get the proper size, and you come back. And if the size does not fit properly, you know, let's say it's a little big, or maybe it's too, maybe it fits, but it's tight, then you just, you get the dog. And as a family, you go back to the pet store you let the dog interact. You let the dog see life, be there. And then you can literally take that harness off, give it back to them, and get the proper size right there with him. Now, it's easy to get the right harness because there's so many, you know, that you can make very large and very small. So just before you leave the dog, measure around the chest area and the front frontal from the neck down to the waist and go get a harness and get a leash and you can take the dog back after and get a collar and get its tags because they have the machines right there you know make it feel like it's special because it is and it's doing so much for you and so much for your family and I think I'm going to do a part two, which is about when you get home. And because this is running really long. So look, I'll put the link to part two down below. So thank you for listening and see you in the next video.